Hello, welcome back to another video tutorial here at Geeky Play Studios. My name is Gary Miller. I was thinking the other day uh, how to create a um, a ringed, um, you know, a planet with a uh, asteroid belt uh, orbiting around it. So I spent a few, I spent a little time and I created a hexagon model and brought that into view and assigned some textures and created an ecosystem. And it was a rather simple process, and, well, the image I have here on screen is, is what I came up with in a relatively short amount of time. And I thought, well, that was easy, so I put that idea away. And uh, later in the day, I thought, how could I take that further? What else could I do? That was pretty simple. And I, and I got to thinking, uh, I like to watch the Discovery Channel and science shows. And uh, I've been online many times and seen many of the images that, the Hubble telescope is taken, as well as pictures that you'll see from NASA and artists' conceptions of some of the stuff that's out there in the universe. And what really intrigues me are those spinning galaxies that you see out there. And I thought, wow, I would love to create one of those, but how would I go about doing it? Well, I went online and I typed in, did a Google search, typed in spinning galaxies, and I came up, and I, uh, the search came back with exactly the pictures that I wanted. And as soon as I saw the pictures, I, I knew right away, oh, well, this is, this is going to be easy. So this is what I came up with. Um, now, it's just, just the spinning galaxy ex itself. I haven't put anything else in the background. And I spent uh, the better part of, of uh, the day perfecting the the technique, at least the best I can do, to get just this look um, that, I've, that I've got up here on the screen. And I think it is really cool looking. I mean, it looks like one of those spinning galaxies you'd see out there in, uh, you know, come back from the Hubble telescope. Now, true, I've got a planet in the middle. You probably wouldn't have a planet, but you can replace it with a sun or whatever you want. Or you can use this as like an asteroid belt instead of a spinning galaxy. However you want, this is the arrangement I came up with. And I think it looks pretty cool. Um, but you wouldn't want to stop you you wouldn't want to stop your creativity here. Uh, over at Geek at Play, Vladimir, under the creativity tab, uh, boosting creativity tab, if you come down here to 65. Vladimir has created a tutorial for Space, Red Dwarf, Supernova, and you come down a little further to 49, and he's got another one, another uh, space one. So if you uh, decide to make a spinning galaxy like this, you might want to check out those other tutorials and incorporate some of the elements in there. So uh, I think I've uh, done a good job at uh, getting an understanding on how I'm going to do this and perfecting the technique and we're going to start off in Photoshop so here we go first thing I'm going to do is create a new document control N and I'm going to create it 1200 by 1200 at 300 resolution now I've got my foreground and background color set to their black and white default well I want to uh, start off with a black background because space is black and I want to create a new layer above that. I'm going to come up here to my rectangular marquee tool. And whatever I'm doing here, you can do in any other uh, competent paint program. Uh, I'm just going to create a rectangle about like that. I'm going to switch my foreground and background colors. I'm going to hit Control Delete to fill that with white. And I'm going to Control D to deselect that. I'm going to copy that layer. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to rotate it 40, 45 degrees like that. Confirm that. I'm going to select both of them, merge them together so now I have one object out of that. I'm going to come down here and apply a layer mask to that. Come up here to filter and come down here to render and hit clouds. I'm going to duplicate that layer by dragging it down over the create new layer icon and I'm going to take the opacity of it down 100%. So it's essentially as if I didn't do anything. So with these two layers selected, I'm going to right-click and merge them together. Come up here to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. I'm going to apply a little bit of a blur to that. 
and now I'm going to come back to filter, distort, and come to twirl. And um, you can apply any amount that you want. Um, I wouldn't apply too much only because you're going to lose a lot of integrity of the cloud filter that you that we ran and filled in here. So for me, I don't know, whatever, 236, that's a good amount. Okay, essentially now what I've gotten is the spin uh, of this galaxy, and that's what I want. So I'm going to come over here to my uh, blur and sharpen and smudge tool. I'm going to use a smudge tool. And over here in the my brushes palette, now I know my some of these palettes don't show up here on this video, and I'm sorry if they don't. I don't know how to remedy that. But in my brushes palette, I'm going to choose number 11 brush. And I'm going to use my pin on this because it gives me a little bit better control. Uh, I'm just going to start blurring this. And I don't want to I don't want it to look too much like a saw blade. I don't want it to be real uniform. Um, in some of those spinning galaxy pictures, and I would and I would recommend you go and look at some so you can get a better idea because this is the most important part of the whole tutorial. You've got to get this uh, this this uh, this image here that we're doing here in Photoshop. You've got to get it looking good because when we use it in in view, um, if you don't do a good job here, you're going to lose all the effect in view. Um, but I don't want it to look exactly like a saw blade. I do want to have, I will have, you know, one, maybe two long trails spinning off of this uh, because that's what I have seen uh, in my internet search. But I don't want a whole bunch of them, well, because that's not uh, what I have seen. and. And um, I, I want to kind of keep it consistent with what uh, I can expect to see in reality. But you can create it however you want. Nevertheless, you've got to get this part looking good. Now, bear in mind, this, this um, image here that we're creating is going to do double duty. One, it's going to be a uh, distribution map for our ecosystem, and it's going to be a distribution map for our materials. So. It's going to be an alpha image when we use it in view, so any part of this that is black will not, uh, um, we won't be able to put an, al uh, an ecosystem on it, and it won't take a, a, a texture. So um, inside of this area here, I don't want really dark blacks. Mild, you know, middle tone blacks or dark grays, that's fine. But I want to stay away from having dark black because that'll be a big void, uh, one, in my material, and two, in my ecosystem. So that is, uh, that's one thing I want to be careful of. And once, you, uh, once you get started doing this, You'll, you'll realize um, as you start growing your ecosystem on it, rendering it, and looking at it, you'll start. You'll probably come back and say uh, to Photoshop here and think, "Oh wow, I can do something like this a little bit better." And you'll be playing around more and more with your displacement map, like I was. So I'm going to pause it here and uh, do a little smudging, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I've uh, pretty much smudged a looks like a head of cabbage here. Um, I want to do a little bit more here and show you something that I, after experimenting and doing this numerous times today, that I have uh, found to be quite effective. And that is, you might be able to see these very faint little gray areas up here. They are very, very faint. And if you know about uh, alpha maps, wherever there is white, you can put a material on it and or you can grow an ecosystem on it. Well, these areas here are so faint, you prob we probably won't see any texture that we put on it. But the cool thing is, 
it is it, it is light enough that we'll be able to put our our asteroids on it and i want to make sure that i create some of these little just just little faint areas with color you don't even really have to see them but i just want to have some little faint areas with color because it really increases and you'll see let me uh bring back that uh that galaxy picture that i um displayed earlier like right here here this little area here you can barely see any sort of uh, uh of this cloud type of material you can barely see it but you can see the the rocks the asteroids uh like out here as well that the ecosystem did did uh use in and and place some asteroids on and that looks really cool it looks like some some little stragglers that were that haven't uh, been in totally enveloped in the uh gravitational pull so i, w I definitely want to include some of those some of these little uh very very um, faint gray areas I think that adds a lot of realism and maybe a little along here okay I'm not going to spend the rest of the day on uh, creating this uh, I'm going to save this save it as a JPEG and I'll just call it test displacement map save it to my desktop maximum resolution all right time to get on into view all right here we are in view first thing I want to do is I want to lose the ground plane come up here to uh, atmosphere and the atmosphere I'm going to use is located here under others and I want to choose the outer space atmosphere come up here to atmosphere editor under effects I'm going to disable those stars I don't want any of those being uh, visible create a new layer I'm going to create a sphere and come back and create a uh, a plane uh, with my plane selected I'm going to come down here to as this is called size and I'm just going to increase its size for now oh you know what let's run back to Photoshop there's one thing I forgot to do create a new layer and come over here to elliptical marquee tool hold down shift release change my foreground color to black alt delete I want to fill that in control D to deselect now this area here is going to be the center of where I'm going to put I don't know a planet or a Sun or whatever so I don't want anything in this area so now that I've got it selected, I'm coming up here, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm just going to blur it out, make it look like it's a big old hole in the middle. That looks good. And center it here. I'm going to hold down Shift and Alt and expand it. And that should do. Okay, now I'll save this, save as te uh, JPEG test displacement map yes okay okay let me back this out so I can see select my plane come up here to my materials I'm just gonna choose some basic high contrast materials at first click OK and click OK. First thing I want to do is save this, save as, incorporate texture maps, project galaxy, do I want to overwrite? Yes. Uh, come back, I want to choose a mixed material, so I'll just create, uh, well the green will work on this. And right click on the distribution map. Come over here, I want to click on uh, create distribution map. I want to change it to texture map. Grab my arrow, plug it into here, choose alpha output. Now, here's something I've noticed with uh with view 7 and uh I don't know, I'm not sure if it's something I'm doing wrong or if it's a little um a little bug. 
but um, I'm ha I, I have I have to uh, do this several times in order for it to work. Let me choose my no, it was called test. There it is. Okay, it displays my uh, my map up there, but uh, notice over here it's not displaying it. And it's not displaying it here. So what I have learned is uh, I have to save it, and then I have to quit, and load it back up, and then it'll start working. So I'll be right back. Okay, let's open up our Project Galaxy. And there we are. Now it's starting to show it. So this is going to have to be uh, remedied. Change it to Object Parametric. I'm just going to come to a top view, render that, because now I want to center my sphere over here in the, in the middle of the void where uh, I don't want anything to grow. I don't want to put any of, uh, of my asteroids. And it's going to have to come this way just a little bit. Okay, that'll work. Let me uh, do a render in this view. Okay, that's fine. Okay, I'm going to select my plane and my red material here. I'm going to come over here to transparency and enable 100% transparency so this thing is gone. Over here in my second material, I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to come down here to glowing and I'm going to select the glowing moon material and I'm probably going to want to increase the ambient and the luminous sliders a little bit and let's do a quick render to see what it looks like well, let me get rid of that red don't know where that's coming from Make sure I set it to 100. Yes, it's 100. Clear. Well, you know what? I could always just set it to black. But it still should not be showing through. Let me try uh, selecting this one again. the luminance. Oh, also, this is a glowing material. You don't want that because it will gl cause the outside edges of this plane to glow, and it won't look very good. Let's do a quick test render, and we can barely see it, so we're going to need to bump up the uh, luminous, make it a little bit brighter. Okay. And I'm going to reposition my light source about here. You can barely see it. It's going to have to uh, going to have to bump it up a little bit more. Let's change the uh, the color to blue. That should pro uh, to white rather. That should probably help some. And indeed it has. And it's starting to, there we are, it's starting to come out now. Okay, I'm going to grab my sphere. It still needs to be a little bit smaller. A little bit smaller. And I'm going to assign a texture to it. And I'm just going to use a simple texture that comes with view down here in rocks. This color here, red, brown, rock. I like that. That has a good effect. I'm going to come over here under Effects, Glowing Material. I'm going to let, add a little glow to it. I thought that uh, looked pretty neat. And I'm going to disable Receive and Cast Shadows. And let's do a little test render. 
Okay, that's what we've got after our render. I think I'm going to add my ecosystem to this material now. Ecosystem, general, add. I'm just going to add uh, regular rocks. I'm uh, the density. Um, let's come over here to scaling. On the all axes, I want to enable maximum rotation. Under the density, well, I guess I'll try 58 to begin with. I'm going to bring this down to uh, 0.200. Scaling, I do want variable scaling, so I'm going to double click on that. Under the layers tablet, I'm going to use this bidirectional one. I like that. I'm going to right click on size, and I'm going to bring this down about, well, about two thirds of the way. Click OK, and click OK, and let's populate it. And we've got 5,262. Let's do a render of this, see what it looks like. I like that, except I don't like the material. So I'm going to come over here and double click on my uh, rock material. I'm going to double click on that. I'm going to come up here to some materials that I got. And under the rocks tab, no, it's the ground tab. There we are, ground tab. I've got this moon rock from uh, from Geek at Play that I think works really well. I'm gonna so I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna disable cast shadows because it'll render a little quicker for me. I'm gonna click OK. Now down here at the bottom, it's gonna be uh, calculating this, so I'll be right back. Okay, that did take a couple minutes. So if uh, you, when you when you go this route, just uh, just be patient. And let it uh, do its thing. All right, let's uh, do a quick render. Okay, I like that. I'm going to change it to final, and I'll be right back. All right, here's what I've got. I want to make one change, and that is I'm going to click on my sphere. I'm going to um, increase the luminance, luminous value of that a little bit. And I'm going to render that and be right back. Okay, so I am done. I'm just going to give you a little render here, and I am very pleased with this. You can always go and increase the number of asteroids in your ecosystem. And uh, I'll leave that totally up to you. But as this completes its first pass and comes on in its second pass, um, notice the realism that distribution map gave to this, as well as that cloud material. You know, that, that blue swirling cloud material really gives a uh, convincing look of a uh, little dust and debris and just finite matter that's that's caught up in this uh, swirling mass that's uh, that's orbiting this this planet I think it's a really slick looking uh, effect that that material uh, gives to this so that's creating a spinning spinning galaxy here in view and Photoshop and don't let your uh, creativity get stalled here apply some other effects like some of the ones that uh, Vladimir shows over at Geek at Play. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching here at Geek at Play. My name is Gary Miller. Have a good day.